As we continue, we will look at two different but common structure types for scenarios. Whichever you use is determined by the type of scenario you are trying to build. But first, let's open up the plan view and we will add additional waypoints. Remember, you don't have to be accurate when initially clicking to add them, as you can enter the value along the road after the waypoint editor opens. We currently have one at 150 already, so let's add the next at 450. Right click on road 1 and choose add, add waypoint to road 1. Click Add, and under the command, choose Checkpoint. Verify that it is at 450, and click OK. Now go further down the road, right-click, Add, Add Waypoint to Road 1. Verify that it's at 700, choose Add, and the command Checkpoint Waypoint. Click OK to close, and we'll add one more, just a little bit further down the road, Add Waypoint, and let's make this at 810. Choose Add in the editor, under Command, Checkpoint Waypoint one more time, click OK, and now let's close the plan view. This diagram illustrates the two primary types of structures. Type 1 shows independent events with exits all originating from the initial start event. This is a more common type because it is easy to add new events to the chain. However, with type 1, it is important that you uncheck the end event option in the exit conditions. I will show that once we create the example. Let's continue. Open up the scenario manager by going to edit, edit scenarios, and then this time we will choose to copy the tutorial. Go to edit, rename this to type 1, or something that will let you know that this is the first structure. Click OK. You must do this to confirm the name and then go back into edit. Under the start event, choose to add three additional exits, so there are a total of four, including the initial message exit. Now, choose to add three new events. Call the first new event, message2, and select edit. From there, select the multimedia models tab and choose add. Under model type, select message model, and then the file, you can type your message. Just make sure it's something that you can recognize. I chose to write past second checkpoint. Again, you can edit the fonts and colors, and once finished, press OK. You can test this like before, just make sure you add a duration. I chose three seconds. For the second new event, entitle it message three. Go to edit, and like before, go to multimedia models, add a new message model, and just type something that you will recognize for the next checkpoint. Like before, edit the text to whatever you want it to be, choosing colors and fonts. You can test it, and then choose how it will display on the screen. Add your duration, and then close. Rename the final event to finish. Now, for exit 2, under the start event, choose message 2. For exit 3, choose message 3, and for exit 4, choose finish. We've already set the exit condition for the first exit, and now we must repeat the process for the following. Under Exit 2, choose Add, then choose Checkpoint Waypoint, and choose the second waypoint as 450. Under Exit 3, choose Checkpoint Waypoint once more, and then the 700 Checkpoint Waypoint. Then for Exit 4, choose Add, Checkpoint Waypoint, and choose 810. You must uncheck the option to the right under each of the first three exits called End the Event. This will allow you the event to continue even after you've passed these waypoints. However, for Exit 4, leave this option checked, and under the option Do Nothing, choose End This Scenario. This will end this scenario once it passes the finish line. Choose OK, and you have now completed the first scenario type. Now we will look at the second type of scenarios I have called Type 2. These are sequential in nature and use events and exits that flow directly into one another. These differ from the first as the event is now dependent on the previous. We will also leave the End the Event option checked for each of the exits as these will end the events as they are passed. Now from the Scenario Manager, choose to copy Type 1, go to Edit, rename this to Type 2, click OK to confirm the new name, and then choose Edit once more. We will break down the existing scenario by dialing back the number of start event exits to 1. Then, add exits to the events Message, Message 2, and Message 3. For the Message event, set Exit 1 to Message 2, then choose to add a Checkpoint Waypoint condition. Like before, choose 450 meter waypoint. 
Continuing, set message 2's exit to message 3. Add another checkpoint waypoint condition, and this time choose the 700 meter waypoint. And lastly, set the exit for message 3 as finish and create the last condition again as checkpoint waypoint selecting the 810 meter waypoint. Then go to exit 1 under the start event and recheck the option and the event under exit conditions. Then verify the option is checked for the other event exits. It should be checked by default. Now exit out of the scenario editor and manager and under the selector at the top, choose type 1 and click play. As you pass through each of the checkpoints you will notice that the messages pop up correctly. I've decided to wait until the end so you can see how these different scenarios work side by side. Though they are structured differently the results should be the same. As you watch the first type being tested you see the first message. As you pass the second checkpoint you should then see pass second checkpoint and then the final one will come up just the same. Repeat and choose Type 2 and click Play. Like before, you can see the message conditions popping up. If the messages do not pop up for either, please review the video and accompanying notes. As we continue, we will investigate common events with their different exit conditions.